In this video, we'll discuss an example on short-run production. Uh, and in this case, we'll use uh, the case of a cubic production function given as this function here. And suppose okay, we will be operating in the short run in which the firm cannot change the level of capital it used, which is fixed at 10 units of capital. And we're given four tasks to do today. First, we need to derive the total product of labor function. Second, we need to derive the marginal product of labor. Third, we need to find the optimal labor, say L star, to be employed by the firm, given the fixed input of capital. And fourth, we need to evaluate the total production of labor function with respect to the optimal L star. Now, as we said in the last video, uh, in the short run, not all inputs can be changed due to the period's limitations. So in this case, there is a fixed input and that particular fixed input there is capital. So we cannot, the firm, okay, cannot change the level of capital due to the shortness of the production run. As such, the only thing that it can choose to change to improve the technical efficiency of the production process is labor. So let's start doing this problem. So let's start by first deriving the total product of labor function. So the total product of labor function is essentially our production function evaluated, uh, sorry, not evaluated, but uh, plugging in okay, our fixed amount of capital. So uh, in this case, so we plug in our fixed unit uh, or fixed number of capital, which is uh, k in this case, which is capital, so which is 10. So we plug that in f l 10. So that's equal to 600 l squared times 10 squared minus l cubed times uh, 10 cubed. Then we simplify this so that's 600, then 10 squared is 100. So 100 times 600, that's uh, 60,000. So 60,000 L squared minus 100 cubed, that's 1,000. So that's 1,000 okay, L cubed. And we call this our total product of labor function. So that's 60,000 L squared minus uh, 1,000 L cubed. Now, we can derive the marginal product of labor function the marginal product of labor, again, is the additional output we get when we increase labor holding capital constant. In this case, we really can't change capital, so capital is indeed held constant. So it's just a function of labor here, so that's the derivative, um, sorry, so that's the derivative of um, TPL with respect to L. So that's, uh, so... We'll use, uh, we'll use simple power rule in this first term here. So 2 times 60,000, that's 120,000 L minus, um, again, simple power rule, that's 3,000 L squared. Notice that is greater than zero for all values of L greater than or equal to zero, which suggests that the marginal product of labor is indeed positive. What does that mean? Uh, if I increase... Um, uh, my utilization of labor, say, by one unit, that will increase the production process in this case. Now, the third point here says um, find, so we want to find the optimal labor to be employed. And uh, we'll discuss this condition moving forward, but the condition by which optimal employment is attained is when the marginal product of labor, so that's DTPL, where dl is equal to zero. So we equate that equal to zero. So we already solved for that earlier. So that's 120,000 L equal to 3,000 L squared. So we're just rearranging this one there. So we equated it to zero. So we want to simplify and isolate out L. So we can divide both sides by 3,000 L. So that's 3,000 L. Okay, so simplifying, so this cancels out, this cancels out, we're just left with L on this side. And then the L's cancel out here. 120,000 divided by 3,000, that's 40. And 40 is our optimal amount of labor to be utilized. Okay, then the last uh, question here, okay, 
is we need to evaluate the total product of labor function with respect to the optimal amount of labor. So that's TPL, which is equal to Q, which is equal to F, 40, 10, that's equal to 60,000 times 40 squared, okay, 60,000 uh, times, four, uh, times 40 squared, minus uh, 1,000 times uh, 40 cubed. And if we solve for this one, so for the first term, we get 40 squared times 60,000. So that should be 96 million. And for the second term, that's less uh, 40 cubed times uh, 1,000. And that should give us 64 million. Uh, subtracting the two. So we want to sub sub uh, subtract to get the optimal. And that gives us an optimal, uh, the highest level of production in this case, which is 32 million. Okay. Now, let's illustrate this in a graphical example so that we can illustrate the relationship between um, our production function or the total product of labor function and the marginal product of labor. So we do two graphs here. So we have TPL on the y-axis on the first graph. Okay, TPL on the y-axis. And then this is labor. Then we have here at the bottom axis, we have marginal product of labor here. And this is labor as well. So using this approach, okay, our production function looks something like this. So it's, uh, it's quasi-concave in a sense that uh, it increases as L increases. So notice the value of the function increases as L increases, but it increases at a decreasing rate. And you, that's, born, that's born out of the phenomenon of diminishing marginal product, which we'll discuss a bit. So our marginal product of labor function looks something like this. Okay. And if we notice, say this is our highest point, okay, so say that's our highest point. Uh, this is L star, okay, that's the highest or that's the optimal amount of employment, which will give us, okay, that will give us Q star, okay, that will give us the highest Q. In this case, this Q here is 32 million, which is by our example. This L here is 40. And since MP, uh, we equated MPL equal to zero, so that's why the MPL function here is equal to zero, that also occurs at L equals, equals 40. So that's the relationship between the marginal product of labor and the total product of labor.